Is that the answer? Well, there. Is that a lot? And did you guys answer? No. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't. They don't need any answers. When you drive there, it's kind of. Welcome to the February 15th, 2017 meeting of the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission for the City of Thousand Oaks. Please rise and follow me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, it's great to see everyone here tonight. Ms. Zambrano, let's begin by taking roll. Commissioner Engler? Present. Commissioner Gregory? Here. Vice Chair Simpson? Here. Chair Reeder? Here. And Commissioner Lemo is absent. Good. I'd like to take a moment to introduce a few people that are attending our meeting tonight. One is Sergeant Carl Patterson. Welcome. Also, Senior Deputy Dubai. And finally, Tom Hare, who is a representative of the Caneo Recreation and Parks. Thank you for coming, everyone. Ms. Zambrano, would you start by describing the procedure for public comments? This is the time and place for public comments. A speaker card is available for those wishing to address the Traffic Commission regarding items on the agenda or on a subject within the city's jurisdiction. Speakers for specific agenda items shall be called and heard during that agenda item. All remarks should be addressed to the C Traffic Commission as a whole, and all documents for the Commission and the official record should be presented to the Recording Secretary prior to speaking. Speakers are requested to state their name and community of residence for the record. Under state law, public comment matters may not be acted upon by the Traffic Commission unless listed on the agenda, but may be referred to the City Engineer for administrative follow-up. As comments can only be recorded while speaking into the microphone, please refrain from addressing the commissioners unless you are at the podium. If you're unable to come to the podium or should you need to step away while speaking, a wireless microphone is available for your convenience. Pursuant to Traffic Commission standards, public comment speakers are allowed three minutes. The yellow card will be dis displayed when you have one minute remaining. Also, please silence all cell phones during the meeting. And at this point, we have no public comment cards. Thank you, Mrs. Zambrano. The next item of business is summary notes. Commissioners, are there any questions regarding these notes? Proceeding on, we're going to start with the engineer's report regarding Avenida de las Arboles and Big Sky Traffic Control. Good evening, Chair Reader and Commissioners. Uh, before Jim provides the Traffic uh, Commission with the report tonight, I just want to remind the Commission that the item on the agenda tonight is to discuss traffic control alternatives at the intersection of Avenue de los Arbolos and Big Sky Drive. I know at the last meeting there are a lot of concerns in the neighborhood about parking related to the Wildwood Trailhead, and that item is not on tonight's agenda. I also want to let the Commission and the public know that a neighborhood meeting is being scheduled by Conejo Recreation Park District for the beginning of March at Wildwood Elementary to discuss the parking issues specifically. Prior to the meeting, the city is planning to get additional traffic counts on Arbalus over the weekends and as well an estimated number of parked cars that might uh, drift into the neighborhood over the weekend. So we're going to be gathering data the rest of this month, probably not this weekend because it's supposed to rain, but immediately following. And uh, as soon as we have a meeting date and time confirmed, we will uh, um, there will be notices mailed out to the neighborhood and we will email out notices to any of the residents that we have their email addresses we'll also post the neighborhood in advance of that meeting 
So anybody here, if we don't have your email address, um, you can also, that meeting will be announced on our website. So um, as you already mentioned, Tom Hare is here tonight um, from CRPD and uh, may be addressing the commission during public comments on this item. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Got, got you covered. Jim, please proceed. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, commissioners, uh, this is an item to consider traffic control improvements for the intersection of Avenue de los Arbolas at Big Sky Drive. Um, here's a vicinity map that shows the uh, area that we're considering this evening. Uh, it's the west end of Arbolas as it uh, intersects Big Sky Drive. The area is uh, west of Lynn Road and Wildwood Park is, is accessed from this uh, intersection. Um, here's an enlarged view of the intersection of Arbolas and Big Sky. And what we're dealing with here is, uh, we, as we recall last meeting, we talked about three incidents that occurred here in 2016. Uh, errant vehicles drove through the uh, intersection, failed to make the right turn from Marvelous into Big Sky, and subsequently struck the uh, block wall there at 940 Bright Star Circle. Uh, in each collision, the drivers were found to be driving under the influence, and they occurred after um, sundown. Last month, the staff, uh, we made a recommendation to implement additional warning signs and striping modifications to the intersection. However, the commission voted 4-0 to have uh, staff investigate other treatments that offer greater protection other than the uh, additional warning signs and striping treatments suggested by staff. Um, listed here on this slide are a number of issues that were raised at the last meeting ranging from uh, the 45 mile per hour speed limit uh, issues that occur at the intersection and issues that are related to traffic and parking issues generated by Wildwood Park. And as Mr. Finley indicated, those are uh, the park issues are separate matters and we'll be um, looking at those separately. Um, in response to the speeding issues that occurred last meeting, um, here's a photograph that shows Pedersen Road uh, south of Olson Road. And as you can see, the road char characteristics are very similar to what you have on Arbalus. What we did here on Pedersen is uh, we narrowed the travel lane by creating this buffer zone that creates a larger separation between the travel or traveling vehicles and the and the bike um, uh, cyclists in the bike lane. And we're we're looking to do this type of uh, treatment here on Arbalus. And um, what we'll do what we'll do is three months after we implement this striping on Arbalus. Uh, take measurements of speeds and see whether or not there's uh, su sufficient justification to lower the speed limit. So now I just want to get into the uh, three options for uh, traffic control treatments at the intersection. Um, each of the three options um, include stop sign control for westbound traffic. So what this uh, first option is uh, adding the um, stop sign for westbound traffic, a guardrail, for errant vehicles in front of the block wall at 940 Bright Star Circle, and uh, thirdly, the uh, reduced travel lane with that buffered zone between the travel lane and, and bike lane. The main advantage of this is that it uh, better regulates traffic at the intersection during the busy park periods, and with the uh, uh, stop signs, uh, stop um, legends, and war stop warning uh, signs, it would uh, better alert traffic of the change in road condition that that occurs at Big Sky Drive uh, it does have a shorter, uh, relatively short implementation period, about uh, 45 to 60 days. Among the disadvantages, that it could divert traffic into Frontier Avenue. Uh, noise levels may increase here due to the stopping and acceleration of vehicles. Some drivers may not comply with the stop sign, and um, obviously, we may not be able to prevent uh, DUI collisions from occurring. Uh, the second option is uh, um, uh, where we extend the median that's on Arbalus into Big Sky Drive. It includes the same elements that you have with the stop sign in option number one, but with that um, new island there that's um, onto Big Sky, we have that gap that's between the existing island and the new island. You can uh, make left turns into Wildwood Park or U-turns to go back down uh, eastbound on Arbalus. The main advantage of this um, option is that the extended portion or that new little island 
It would uh, be able to serve as a barrier for errant vehicles. We would have um, guardrail along the perimeter of this island. And also within that new island, you can uh, add additional warning signs to alert traffic of the change in road condition and the turn into Big Sky Drive. Um, uh, among the disadvantages are similar to option number one with related to the um, diversion, noise, and compliance issue and not being able to uh, control DUI uh, drivers. And this one does have a longer implementation period, roughly about three to six months. And uh, finally, option number three in the staff report is a um, little bit more compl complex uh, solution where we uh, gradually shift traffic in the westbound direction into the existing median. We're gradually tapering it. So by the time the uh, vehicles get to the stop sign, they're no longer aligned with the property at 940 Bright Star Circle. Uh, left turns are still permitted into the park. You can still make U-turns. Um, and in the area to the right of the travel lane, you'll have a sort of a wider area due to the tapering of the traffic into the median. Um, in that new median, you can um, uh, add landscaping for any landscaping lost in the existing median. Uh, the main advantage here is that traffic is realigned uh, to the south, no longer in alignment with the property at 940 uh, Bright Star Circle. And uh, because of that, there's no longer a need for a uh, guardrail with this option. Among the disadvantages of this is that it does have a longer implementation uh, period of up to one year. So with that, the uh, staff recommendation is in the report. If the commission concurs with either option number two or number three, We'll place that item on a future uh, traffic uh, or city council agenda. So this concludes the presentation, and we'll be glad to answer um, any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mashiko. Are there any questions from staff? Or are there any questions for staff? Excuse me. Yes. Um, with option number three did you remove the stop or is that still there the stop sign if you go to option three was the stop removed or is it okay the okay here's option three on the board uh the stop sign would be included in this for westbound traffic the stop sign is included in all three options the stop, okay and then my next question has to do with um when you install a stop sign in one lo one leg of an uh intersecting of two of the streets intersecting do you have to install a stop sign for the big sky traffic coming towards the park um in, in this situation we felt it wasn't necessary to stop the traffic coming from big sky um going southbound uh onto arbalus since that that one doesn't seem to have uh, have any issues there okay all right thanks yes uh commissioner gregory Thank you. Um, I like your choices that you gave us. Um, I see that you recommend number two, and it certainly is the one I think meets uh, the most criteria. I do have a couple questions about it, however. Um, when you say that uh, it would have a, uh, what was it, four to six month imp implementation, is it possible or do we need to get city council approval? to initiate putting a stop sign in there? Yes, that's uh, the main reason why we would have to go to city council is that any stop sign installation would have to be approved by council. All right, all right. And the uh, extension of the curb, um, uh, I, I, I assume that will have uh, a, a regular curb reveal height as you know most curbs have, or uh, what, that's four to eight inches? Uh, yes, that's correct. R roughly about six, anywhere from six to eight inches. Right. I, I guess my concern would be is if, if that's the only thing, given the history of people driving right through that, that would slow somebody down. Uh, what, what would be your input if we increase that to at least eight, uh, just to create a little more of a tire barrier since so many people drive trucks and SUVs to... Uh, to be kind of, uh, you know, to slow somebody down if they did actually go through that. 
Well, I, I think well, I think most of our um, curbs are about six inches. I mean, we can go to eight, but I think what what we have here is with this design, there's a guardrail along that perimeter. So if um, anything's going to slow or stop an errant vehicle, it would be that guardrail rather than um, having the curb do it. So curb would have no effect on the tires, or because what we observed before with some of the things that were is that cars just became airborne. And that's probably hitting the curb, you know, forcing the front tires up over. You're going fast enough if you're airborne. So increasing the curb height would have zero effect on that? Uh, depending on the speed, it, it would not have a lot of effect. Okay. Um, depending on the speed, depending on the size of the tires. Right. Again, um, the, the challenge here is, based on the history, um, you know, there's a lot of we, – we can't really design – um, for any given condition. Um, so we don't know if it's going to be a small car, big car. What we can do is uh, we can put guardrail in there. We can put some landscaping in there. We could, you know, we could even put a tree in there. But, again, we have to maintain sight distance across that median. Right. So um, we this, this option does move the vehicles a little further to the south if you look at the alignment with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, another two to three feet. Right. Um, so uh, what what we're really trying to do here is is slow a vehicle down and and dissipate and, energy. And that's my concern too. Yeah. Is, you know. That's 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 why this is a this is a good this is a good option. It can right. be installed fairly quickly, but it's not it's right. not foolproof. Would uh, would the installation any kind of sand barrel inside it aid in slowing a car down a little more? Um, not. It's not wide enough to really have any significant impact. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would, I would expect that we would uh, put in a guardrail and maybe a, a boulder or two. Again, we know that the boulders have rolled. Uh, yeah, whatever we do here, um, there is not an ideal solution because right. we just can't get. We, you know, we can't. But we're still going to have the K rail where it exists now. We would, we would replace the K rail with a guardrail. Okay. So. Uh, basically, if you surrounded that median and guardrail, you'd have guardrail on two sides. So, I mean, if a vehicle went through that median, um, they'd have to go through a guardrail on the way in, a guardrail on the way out, okay. um, and hopefully hit another curb and hit another guardrail. And right. by the third that's, one, we're kind of hoping that that's what that's that, what I'm looking that for. we're getting yeah. we're getting we're getting things slow. And down. I realize we're not trying to put something up to. Yeah, cause somebody to have a fatal crash. I yeah, mean, that's it's not the goal. It's just to slow people down. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Simpson. Thanks. Can you walk me through the logic of the stop sign and why that is a key element in all of the designs that we have and, and how you will frame that to city council? Yes. Um, a stop sign and stop sign markings are very, very clearly identified in the traffic manual. Uh, how they look, the exact spacing. There's, there's no question when you put a stop sign in, if you have all the proper markings in advance that you've done it per the standards. Anytime you have a free right turn or a right turn or an uncontrolled intersection, um, you can put big signs, small signs, lots of signs, flashing lights, and somebody, the attorney will argue with you that you didn't provide enough notification that my client knew that 15 miles an hour was really what you meant and uh, when you put a stop sign in there's there's no question what you meant and um, that's that's really the main reason yes uh, Commissioner Gregory yeah. uh, this is a real quick one uh, now our DUIs they all happen at night correct correct so the signage is very reflective at night. Yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Engler. So I, I have a question. It's about, first of all, it's about, um, so one of our, one of the users that we have in that um, area are people pulling horse trailers and um, maybe not as much as now the um, per personal cars that are flocking from all over the county outside of the county um, but I'm so curious um, when I look at the different designs I'm I'm leaning in option two or in option three and you know, I don't know 
whether or not the third option allows for um, someone pulling a trailer, a horse trailer behind them. And I think that's something we need to consider because those are legitimate users. They have used that park for years. Um, we, we can check that. I believe it would, but we can check that and we can make sure we design appropriately. So I don't pull a horse trailer, but that that is something that came up to me that was mentioned to me today by a horse user. Um, and my other question is also, I see landscaping in draft in option three, and I like the idea of whatever we do, keeping the pristine beauty of this site in mind. So no flashing lights for me, n none of, nothing that's garish and get, uh, attention getting because of the um, people driving under the influence, because those are the, the smaller number and they're going to drive into a pylon or they're, they're gonna be all over the map regardless of what we do. But I do know that everyone who has moved to this area and who comes to this park um, you, appreciates the beauty of this area. So I wanted everything we do to be smart management of traffic and we want them exactly where we'd like them to be, but I also wanna honor the, the area. Um, and one of the beauties, um, one of the speakers from last month mentioned the, uh, the olive tree. And I have to just ask, is the olive tree something that's in the, in the, in the median? Is that something that's savable in its site, in its current location with the, any of these plans? It, it looks like with the realignment, it would not, uh, it would need to come out. Number option three, I think it would need to come out. Option two, it would not need to come out, obviously. Okay. Um, option three, we would have to plant. Uh, we'd have to plant some other trees I, again, with the wider, with the wider. Um, go to option three, if you will. With that, with that area, you have the opportunity there to plant uh, additional trees and actually quite a bit of landscaping in there. It actually moves the cars further away from the houses, but we would right. lose the olive tree. Is that something that the city is able to, uh, are we able to move them or is that something where we just, we, it's not like oaks where we can try to move them? We don't typically do that for olive trees. Thank you. We, we would obviously plant a lot more trees. And in fact, there's all kinds of opportunity out there to plant trees. Although um, I've, I've been told that uh, that view shed is very important. So we need to make sure we're, we're careful about where we plant trees. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Angler. Those, those are some good points. Appreciate it. I have a question. If there weren't impaired drivers using this intersection, would be, we be having this meeting? Uh, we, we went for a long time without any issues, so I guess I would probably, unless the community had other issues regarding this intersection we probably would not so our direction should be particularly directed toward drivers that are impaired and finding a solution well in light of that I have um, some comments uh, and some questions too um, at the last month's meeting we learned that uh, there was no attempt to stop no skid marks on the roads prior to the collisions is that true so I guess it's okay to assume that the vehicles that did collide with the property were going the speed limit 45 miles per hour. Would that be accurate? Yeah, we we did take a look at the uh, uh, collisions, uh, at least um, in, I think, the last two. I wasn't sure about the first one that occurred in 2016, the last two. It appeared that uh, there was probably no attempt to um, come to a stop. Uh, didn't, there didn't appear to have uh, skid marks in the, in the road. And what was the uh, approximate velocity of these vehicles? Um, I don't have those in front of me. I could take a look at the reports and, okay. and get but back we to got, you. We could assume it was speed limit. That's, that's correct. Okay. Um, According to the Ventura County Star, the drivers uh, sustained uh, moderate injuries. Do you know if any uh, 
passengers or drivers need to be transported to the emergency room? Well, I, th I think they were all, I mean, the, 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 the ambulance emergency services responded to all three, so I, I would imagine they were all, you know, taken away in, in an ambulance. But you're not sure? Yeah, I, I could um, get back to you on that. Uh, we have the collision reports here, so if you would like to know, I can uh, review okay, the what, reports. What, what, it's important for the next thing coming up. Um, concerning the, the crash barrier on Big Sky that we will construct, as described in option one and option two. I'd like to know what the nature of its design is. For instance, is it a rigid barrier, a semi-rigid barrier, or a flexible barrier? And how will these barriers absorb the kinetic energy generated by a vehicle traveling 45 miles an hour? As I mentioned at our last meeting, a vehicle or any object traveling 40 miles an hour has the equivalent speed as falling from a 54, 54 foot height or the equivalent of a five story building. So these crash barriers that you propose, will they be able to absorb enough kinetic energy to protect a driver and or passengers from a serious or even fatal injury? Um. What we are proposing to install are guardrails that are, uh, and actually the, the ones we're proposing would be a wood a wooden guardrail similar to on Borchard, Borchard Road, which uh, has equivalent properties of the typical metal beam guardrail that you see along the freeway. Um, they, are, they are primarily designed to deflect, um, you know, they have multiple posts, um, they will they're not necessarily designed for head-on collisions um, and they will break I mean they will they will break down and uh, cars will events will go through what you're hoping is that there's enough energy dissipated you know it's not it's not like hitting a block wall um, but but it's you know they're standard they're standard we do not have the room to install um, sand barrels or some other sort of deflective device that, that could absorb enough energy not to probably cause serious injury. So in light of that, it might be best to keep a car from hitting the barrier to begin with. That is my preference. Thank you. Um, will, will a barrier such as this prevent a car from actually entering the property at 940 Bright Star Circle? Again, there's a lot of variables there, size of car, speed, traveling. Um, it's, it's hard to say whether it, it would absolutely prevent it. And then you, pres you uh, designed a barrier for the median, and uh, you did describe that where it'd be a double barrier, semi-rigid with perhaps rocks and things so that would be a, a way to absorb more kinetic energy before it hits the final barrier correct all right thank you did you have something yeah I just had a comment that that's why cars are engineered for certain crash conditions that we're not trying to put up something to stop a car just to slow it down the car has to protect the person driving it we can't do that you know, because, well, we can't control what kind of car. We can't control their speed. We can't control a lot of things. So, you know, I would have to say in that case, they they would be better off in a better car than a small, cheap one. Thank you. Uh, in regards to the proposed stop signs, which all three options indicated, um, we learned last at last month's meeting that signs and striping are of little use in towards uh, directing an impaired driver. The California Manual for Uniform Traffic Control Devices states that stop signs are to be used to establish right-of-way. What is the conflict of right-of-way for a driver traveling west on Avenida de las Arboles making a right turn onto Big Sky? 
Okay. Well, well, basically, if you take a look at uh, any of those options, it's uh, stop controlled for uh, before you get to the, uh, the driveway entry into the park. So the way, what we're doing is it's, it's mainly, uh, it's going to stop the right turners, but the idea here was to uh, uh, see if we can resolve some of those issues of the left turners that failed to stop as a car coming from uh, southbound Big Sky was entering onto Arbalus. Um, and it's the simplest way to control both. Uh, that whole approach is with a stop sign controlling that entire approach. Have there been any collisions uh, that uh, resulted from a failure to obey the right-of-way rule? No, we didn't uh, see any in the collision reports. And last question, has staff been to the intersection on the weekends to observe what's going on? I haven't uh, personally uh, observed, but uh, we did have a couple other staff uh, that did some surveys out there taking a look at some of the parking issues because in the past we did have some uh, concerns raised to us regarding the overflow parking in the neighborhood, so we did some, some light surveys. And um, um, you know, although it, that intersection does get busy uh, from what we're, you know, from what other staff had uh, indicated, uh, traffic was manageable. Thank you. Will this commission have access to those surveys? Uh, we don't have those surveys here, but that's something we can provide later. Thank you, Mr. Mashiko. Any other questions for staff? All right. Ms. Zambrano, would you please... Specify. Anyone wishing to address the commission on this agenda item may do so by filling out a speaker card or written statement card. Currently, we have six speaker cards and one written statement card. Speakers are allotted five minutes. Our main speaker tonight, David Dumay, will be allotted ten minutes with an option for five-minute closing remarks after all other speakers are finished. Thank you, Ms. Sombrano. Our first speaker tonight, then, will be Mr. David Dumay. Please state your name for the record and your city of residence. Thank you. 40 Bright Star. Now it's working. Okay, thank you. Uh, David Dumay, Bright, uh, 940 Bright Star Circle, Thousand Oaks. Um, good evening, commissioners, staff. Uh, fellow neighbors uh, for Wildwood, thank you all for coming out. My wife Cheryl and I would just like to take two seconds and thank you for the support you guys have had over this whole thing. We really appreciate it. We're not in this by ourselves. Um, a couple comments real quick. Uh, in the staff report, uh, it said that the mailer was going to go out to a bunch of people. We got it today. So planning didn't work out so great. Um, the other point is um, the staff report was issued last week. Um, there's an indication on, on uh, uh, option number two that shows guardrail, but in the staff report it does not. So the public was not uh, noticed correctly that there was a draft, that there was a guardrail on the median. So that's uh, incorrect uh, procedure as well. Uh, we've all had time to reflect on last month's meeting. And what I took away from that meeting was, I believe we all have the same goal, is to keep vehicles in the street. It was said a couple times. Safety first for the property owners, we heard. City has failed if it, vehicles, get to their property. And I'm glad that uh, Mr. Finley made the point about uh, the parks. Thank you for that. Um, we've talked amongst ourselves. We don't want to make what's happening at the intersection part of tonight's meeting. So thank you for prefacing that as well. And we're, we're, we're doing things on our end on that side as well. So thank you so much. Um, staff has proposed several options that are not going to solve the, the issue of keeping vehicles in the street and off of our property. Um, I won't really go to option number one. Um, option number two um, I'll just go to option number three because number three uh, has some inherent issues as well. Um, you're diverting, diverting the, the, the causation onto on the parkland, and I don't know that that's the right way to do things. 
just letting a vehicle go off into the park, I don't think Mr. Mr. Hare or the Parks Commission is going to want that. And if anybody's there in the evenings, as they do, they're going to be part of this as well. So I don't think that's a violent, uh, a very good option. Narrowing the road is going to be an issue in the event that uh, there's a breakdown, there's an accident. Public safety won't be able to get through. There's going to be no way to get around. So that's going to be a, that's going to be a big issue as well. Um, and then uh, just the neighbors getting queued up in there waiting for somebody to decide whether they're going to turn left into the parking lot and find a place to park or try to go around. That's going to be an issue. Uh, probably going to be some horn honkings and things of that nature that I don't think anybody's going to care about. Um, number two is, is, is uh, an option that has some, um, a little bit of foundation. Um, and I apologize because... I left the house without the option that we presented last month, and I can surely bring that back and maybe present that. But uh, uh, we need to have an option that, uh, um, I was going to say doesn't call out the guardrail, but Mr. Finley explained that it does, that has the engineering to stop the vehicle in the street. Uh, the commissioners last week said, keep it in the street, keep it off their property. So. Um, and that's why the proposal that, that uh, we proposed um, called for no parking on either side. If that gives the engineer some space to beef up the intersection, the knuckle, then so be it. It needs to be engineered. I, I, get, I guess, you know, the, the commission asked that the, uh, the engineers take what the homeowner uh, took, uh, presented, and provide professional engineering. Um, as far as I'm concerned and what I've done in my research, rocks and trees are not DOT-approved vehicle uh, control devices. Um, so I think we could use this number two as a viable option uh, if we had the in, in, uh, excuse me infrastructure to keep errant vehicles in the street. This could be accomplished by using Department of Transportation approved control measures, which will keep vehicles in the street and prevent them from reaching our property. The proposal we presented last commission meeting does just that, installing a median with a guardrail system to keep the vehicles in the intersection and not on our property is what the city staff needs to engineer. <clears throat> Excuse me. I believe the commissioner's comment was let the professionals take a shot at that. Given this proposal, uh, there'd be no requirement for a stop sign at Big Sky as there'd be nothing to yield to, no traffic, no crosswalk. Uh, it'll just be a noise issue, and I'll let some of the neighbors speak to the that have been here longer than we have speak to the uh, issues when the stop sign was there and then when it, when it went away. These all proposals all continue to su suggest guardrails on our property when the commission requested for staff to develop a system that stops vehicles before they get to our property, but yet a guardrail appears in each of these proposals. We fail if a vehicle gets to the private property, is what was said. Guardrails are also going to affect our property value. That's something that we didn't bring up last month. But I don't care what anybody says, landscaping, whatever, you know, people come behind us, it's going to affect our property value, and, and we're not going to ever be able to get that back. Um, guardrails are made to deflect vehicles and keep them on the street. Um, after the October incident, uh, Mr. Mashiko came out to the property, and his comments were, um, uh, the guardrails are made to, def to deflect traffic and not uh, a head-on collision. We did our own little research uh, per the U.S. Department of Transportation manual. The definition of, an, of a, the guardrail is to, quote, always redirect back to the road. They're not intended for head-on collisions. Um, you know, and I, 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 I'm going to stop, but, um, and I, because I, Mr. Reeder uh, said I could do some closing comments, so I'll hold some comments. We have one shot at this. We've had two instances where people could have got killed in our property. I don't want to come back and say it's happened again. The city doesn't need that liability. The city doesn't need that on their necks. And we want to get on with our lives. We want to be able to start construction on our place. We want to be able to sit in our backyard and enjoy our backyard without the fear. You know, it's almost like having PTSD. And I don't mean to, to say that in a bad way for anybody who's had to go through that. But, you know, when you hear things coming down the road, you're going, are they going to stop this time? And the rain makes it worse because, you know, it's just the, the loud the loud noise. So I don't think the city can afford to get it wrong. And I'd like to get it right the first time. So I would propose number two, beefing up the infrastructure to prevent vehicles from getting off of that median, but it needs to carry around the curb because somebody who blows a stop sign or there's no stop sign, they would be able to carry on into our property. So that, that median needs to carry on up big sky as well.
Thank you, Mr. Dubon. Uh, we have a question from Commissioner Engel. Okay, thank you. Hi, Mr. Demai. I'm sorry that I didn't meet you last month. Um, thank you for your comments, and thank you for coming um, to speak tonight. Um, my question for you, and I, I appreciate your reaction, your response to the, the different drafts, um, and um, I've actually asked, if possible, that I get a copy of what you presented to the commissioners last month. I would love to see what you prepared. Okay. Uh, I did get a chance to look at Mr. Mashiko's ver um, version, but I would love a copy. Okay. Um, uh, and how can I get that to you, ma'am? Um, we'll provide that. Okay. 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 So my question for you, in, in looking at these, my, my goal is to keep you safe. Um, and so obviously, as the park use has grown up, we have to address the traffic using it um, and also people who are now misusing the uh, street because they're not they're incapacitated my question for you is that in in version three in option three we're shifting traffic and the, sh the traffic shifts south so that they're not near your back property they're actually aimed south uh, south of your wall and so if they are driving incapacitated, they don't, they don't encounter your back property. They're actually aim, they're being aimed towards the park. And while that you said, you started your comments as saying that's not ideal, I really want you to think about that because if we can move the traffic away from your property and incorporate barriers that prevent them from al being aligned with your back property, that I think we, we accomplish that goal. So I'd like you to, uh, and I'd love for your comments as you guys are speaking about that, you know, like how we can truly move the traffic in a way where we're um, moving them away from property such as yours. Thank you for that, um, uh, ma'am. I, um, you know, I, I had an opportunity to review that a little bit, and the first thing I thought of was the first accident that happened in July. That person didn't go straight. That person veered to the right. So if somebody goes through that channel and veers to the right or to the north, they're in my wall. I, I don't. I, it's too much of a mar, not enough margin for error in my in our view, of of somebody who's uncontrolled. Um, they don't know where they're going. Uh, just for the record, um, the second vehicle that it, uh, came into our property was clocked at 55 miles an hour by the witnesses. That's on the police report. So that just goes to show you. And I can't think that that vehicle number, well, crash number two. Um, was anything slower just by the impact. Um, it disturbs me that there's boulders in the, in the intersection because they're not traffic control devices. Boulders is what exacerbated these accidents, truly are. And there were accidents in the daytime. Uh, the one in 2012 was during the daylight. Um, we have photos that were submitted last month if you'd want to review those as well. And they all had boulders aside to them. So um, I appreciate you asking me my comments. I just think that there's not enough in the margin for error. Am I gun shy? Yes, I am. And so that's why we want to keep the cars in the street. Don't give them an opportunity to get past that, that we, uh, western curb. And, uh, you know, that's why I say if you need more room, then put no parking on there. Then you can get your, your uh, 20 feet of, uh, of lane if that's what we need. Uh, Commissioner Simpson. Uh, Mr. Mashiko, I don't know if you have the email available from Mr. Demai to pop up with the visual of what he had presented last in the last meeting because it really illuminates how hard you worked um, to come up with a solution that really mirrored the resident's request. So I think that the key element that was missing from our agenda and um, our information packet leading into tonight was just the element of the guardrail around the median that you'd propose on option two. Because otherwise, I'm looking at um, what Mr. Dumai had presented and it completely mirrors option two with the exception of um, a little bit more median heading up Big Sky. So if that's a solution that the neighborhood's really comfortable with, I just want them to feel better like we, we did listen and so that was um, aligned with option two. So yeah, I have a copy of that here and unfortunately I can't throw it up on the screen. Um, 
uh, the option did have a, a guardrail extending up uh, Big Sky some distance so that, again, if the idea would be that if a car came around that corner too fast, they would just they would just head up Big Sky instead of hitting anybody's property and hit whatever they hit next after they headed up Big Sky. Um, the the challenge there, and, and part of that, if we need more room, we could eliminate the parking on either side of the street there, which, which would be fine. We have about a 40-foot right away, so we could put um, we could put roughly a 6 or 7 or 8-foot median right up the middle of Big Sky and put a guardrail in it. And then at the end of that median, uh, we would put, I don't know, six big yellow barrels full of sand at the front of that guardrail to protect it in case somebody's coming down Big Sky and accidentally runs into the end of a guardrail, which is a which is a problem. Um, our our feeling was that that's not particularly very attractive in a residential neighborhood. Uh, it would would take care of it, but it's not very attractive, and that's kind of why we started looking for other alternatives, which led us actually to to option three, which was to redirect the cars away from Mr. Dumay's property. The, again, we could work with the park district and install additional deflective barriers on their property. We could do anything with, of course, Mr. Harris' permission. We could we could work with them and and provide additional protection. What, what again, what we're trying to do is, is move the vehicles away from the private property and, and still maintain and make it not look like a freeway on-ramp. And, and my fear is if I put a median and big yellow barrels or black barrels with sand running up Big Sky, it's, it, it looks like a freeway on-ramp instead of a, a residential neighborhood in a rural area. But we could bring that back if you guys want to see what that looks like. Commissioner Gregory. Yeah, I have a question. Um, because it was my assumption that most people are going to see a stop sign at least slow down some rather than just blindly keep driving. You know, because before, if you don't know the turns there, you're driving like, you know, you can just keep going straight. Um, but if somebody even remotely all of a sudden notices, ah, oh, there's a stop sign, I'm going too fast, I can't, you know, I can't stop wouldn't it by logic that they would try to make a right-hand turn there so they're going to hit this barrier sideways they're not going to hit it head on more than likely which allows it to do its job of slowing cars down um, because it is you know two guardrails with th things in between you know are going to slow a car down you know plus then the safety benefit of the the final guardrail is kind of like, well, if you got that far, you know, but we're going to leave that there because I mean, I, it would be ridiculous to take away the last line of defense, let's say, in this instance. Well, the but, safety. Uh, we can't stop a semi truck driving down the street. Right. And I think a uh, vehicle hitting the um, uh, retaining wall that's on our property that's, you know, backfilled basically the whole length because of the elevation is not going to let anybody go anywhere. Um, but you have to think of what's the unintended consequences of having a guardrail. I'd ask any of you if you want guardrails on your property. I bet you what you'd, you'd tell me. I think it, it can, it could be, it could be yeah, engineered. I mean, it, the, yeah, really. The the alternative, it's in your backyard or it's protecting you. Right. So that's we why. can't make it invisible. No, you can't. But you can also um, make it so that um, the vehicles can stay uh, in the street and, um, you know. Yeah, I think that's what our goal is. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Good. Any other questions for Mr. Dubai? Thank you. Thank Mr. you for Dubai. your time. Very, Thank very you. well presented. Our next speaker is Mr. Neil Cullen. And following Neil will be Paul Orcutt. Neil Cullen, <coughs> excuse me, Neil Cullen, 980 Bright Star, Thousand Oaks. Um... I learned last week by expressing my opinion, you're going to step on the feet of your neighbors. So I'm just here to support Dave tonight, and I just, I just wanted to say that because we all don't look. We look from our own windows. We don't look from our neighbors' windows. And a lot of things were brought up uh, last week, and uh, we have to go for one goal, 
and I, again, I want to say it's for the safety of the folks at 940 Bright Star. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker will be Mr. Paul Orcutt. Good evening. Please state your name and my name uh, is city Paul. of residence, please. My name is Paul Orcutt. I live at 930 Bright Star Street. Um, I'm the homeowner there and I've lived there for 32 years. Um, the first thing I want to say is it's great to see the neighbors all here. Um, it it kind of makes you think, you know, out of some bad comes some good. One thing is these trage these things have brought us all closer together, together and um, I think on the same page and, I, and that's only for the betterment of our neighborhood. And um, <clears throat> I thought what my speaking tonight, I could possibly add some historical perspective that others might not be able to, to add because I have lived there since um, 1984. Um, <clears throat> when I first heard of some of these proposals and was looking at them and saw the stop sign at the terminus of uh, Avenida de los Arbolis, um, the saying came to mind that um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Uh, when I moved to that property, uh, there were three stop signs at that intersection. That intersection continued west on Avenida de los Arbolis to the dirt road that had a gate and a chain and some reflectors later on after multiple accidents and it went up into the park and that parking lot was out of sight away from our homes. Um, then of course when Dave and Cheryl's homes were built that design was completely changed and those stop signs were removed. Um, I actually when I got the permit for the wall um, at the back of my home I had to I had to the city required a setback because that was a three-way stop sign there. Um, also to add perspective, I do appreciate staff <clears throat> and the traffic commission looking at history, um, but to say that there were six, there've been five or six accidents there is really a falsehood. Um, there've been more than a dozen, uh, primarily at night, primarily impaired drivers that do not realize that that street ends and they've continued. Um, back in the day when it was just a chain that for the entrance to Wildwood Park, I witnessed the aftermath of a crash where it took off the roof of a car because the chain just peeled the roof of the car off. Um, so from a history perspective, we tried the stop sign already and just a stop sign did not work. Um, and the other thing I also want to add, and to me, the reason I'm here, the most important thing is to pr protect their property. But I live right on that corner. My house backs right on that corner. The head of my bed is 22 feet from the intersection in question. Um, as I looked at some of the recommendations, I personally am in favor of number two, for the most part, with the exception of the stop sign, um, because I believe the staff articulated it well in the reports that people may not obey the stop sign, which could create additional safety issues for pedestrians having a false sense of security. Um, people don't, won't see it as a necessary stop sign and won't completely stop for it anyways. It will increase noise because once the stop signs were removed last time, it decreased the noise in our neighborhood and it, it didn't really change the, 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 the traffic. Um, I do have some concerns about option number two with this beefed up guardrail that potentially an errant vehicle could bounce off of it and end up in my bedroom, um, which is right on that corner, 22 feet from that intersection. And the head of my bed is literally on that corner wall right at that intersection, 22 feet away. Um, but I'm willing to try anything. And if I thought for a minute that a stop sign would in any way enhance this, I would be all for it because I think the priority is protecting that that property and their backyard and their safety. <clears throat> um, I, okay, I do do want to um, also support the idea of extending that median around the corner to um, Bright Star Street uh, for a couple of reasons. One is I don't think it's adequate for even daily traffic because what will happen is that median at the end of the street, people that don't quite make it, make that left into the park as they wanted to, will just jog around it and perhaps create additional dangers. And if that median were extended all the way to um, 
bright star street i i it'll it'll create a smooth traffic flow um other than that, that's about all I have to say, and I appreciate the fact that the city is taking this very seriously because it is a serious matter, and it's not a new it's not a new issue, and I and that's the part I really wanted to to add to this is that it's it, it's been an ongoing issue for over 30 years, and when I moved there 32 years ago, there had already been three other crashes that original owners told me about. Does anybody have any questions Thank for me or any questions? From commissioners, yes, Commissioner. Gregory. Yeah, with the stop sign there, I mean, as long as we, because we have the ability to put some striping in, would you recommend a left-hand turn, painted, let's say, on the pavement, right there, so people do not go around the barrier? What are right, you talking about? A left-hand turn painted in that in that. Well, building. people have to uh, stop. And could then, could you, know, you please speak the at the, micro the microphone park. for us? I'm sorry, I'm trying to look at the picture right. and speak at the. We same can get time. you a portable mic if you'd like. <laughs> well, no, I, I can I can peek around. Um, I'm I'm not clear where the left turn. Uh, um, into the park. Into the park. After the stop sign. Um, I would feel more comfortable personally with a a um, stop sign for the left turning vehicles only. And perhaps something could be placed in the median that would would control, and 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 let them know. I don't know if that's is that working. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, perhaps you know one of the signs that I see quite frequently is cross traffic does not stop with a stop sign, and something along those lines for those left turners going into the park seems realistic. Well, we'd have to get staffs comment on that but that might create a lot of confusion there's a lot of confusion going on but that's for another day um, <laughs> that's not why we're here <laughs> and 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 staff mentioned that their concern is coming down uh, skyline to arbalus that if we extend that up people can run into the end of something and they're trying to make something aesthetically uh, pleasing for the neighborhood but yet you know is safe and does what it's tended to so they're trying to engineer that the best they can yeah, and I'm I, sure I, that they will based on history thanks yeah, I understand that and and I want to be clear about my suggestion and my suggestion is not that that guardrail extends all the way perhaps just a raised curb at that point it can it can graduate off you could have your guardrail near that median but just something to prevent traffic um, because at that point we're changing gears we're talking about impaired drivers at the end of the street and there we're talking about drivers that are making bad decisions that are not impaired and I am concerned that you're going to have drivers that are going to flip a weird UE on right there to go into the park that would would be why I would would extend that curb all the way to um, to uh, Bright Star what? So they would have to go up the hill to the next street. It's not even a hill. It's, there, it's flat that at that you? point, yeah. and just to to the intersection, uh, what it would be, what a hundred feet maybe um, to the intersection of uh, big or uh, big sky and bright star. All right, we can get feedback on that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for your time, everybody. Any other questions? I have I have one question. Oh, yes. Yes, um, as I'm understanding your presentation, that you feel the stop sign is unwarranted? Correct. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. David Lake, to be followed by Mr. Mark Lachok. Leechok. Well, I murder names all the time. I <laughs> Thank you. Please state your name and uh, city of residence for the record. Uh, David Lake, Thousand Oaks. Uh, I live at 926 Bright Star next door to, to Mr. Orkut. Um, I agree with my neighbors that uh, the reason that we're here tonight is to to do something about the drunk drivers that have been impacting uh, property at 940 Bright Star Circle. That's that's the only thing that that we should be focusing on here. Mr. Lake, 
can I interrupt you for a moment? Could you use the microphone on the podium? Uh, you're fading in and out with the handheld. Appreciate it. Is this better? Much better. Okay. Um, that um, the 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 safety of our neighbor and the the issue with the drunk drivers is is the concern that should be addressed here tonight. Uh, I would like to point out a few things that. Um, uh, that I've been thinking about and I agree with my my neighbor that the stop sign would actually create a lot of unintended consequences not only noise but it would um, probably modify the traffic pattern and send more traffic up um, Frontier and, and Bright Star Street uh, with option two um, I don't think that would really stop a drunk driver I, I think a drunk driver bouncing around in between guardrails might end up in a different place um, but that the, the island the the guardrails surrounding a little island in the street may also have some unintended con consequences um, it would draw some of the pedestrian traffic people would be sitting on the the, the um, guardrails uh, there's a, a wall uh, adjacent to mr. Orchid's property that's about um, three feet high and people are quite often sitting on it people come and they scrape their shoes on on things and it may alter the pedestrian traffic into a, a kind of a more dangerous pattern um, they may get pedestrians trapped in between vehicles and guardrails and things like that um, I think option three is is the best option for diverting traffic or uh, that diverting traffic somehow away from the wall at the end of of Arbalus is the only option that will actually address this drunk driving issue I don't think stop signs or signage of any kind will do anything about the uh, impaired drivers that's all I had to say thank you mr. Lake Did thank you commissioners have any questions for mr. Lake all right. I'm not going to take a chance, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for the record, please state your name Thank and you city of portable residence. Microphone. Portable microphone. It's coming. Oh, Just want to be prepared. Uh, my name is Mark Leachock, and I live at 838 Bright Star Street, about halfway down the block. Can you hear me now? Are we good? Okay, I'm um, going to make this kind of brief, hopefully. Uh, one just quick thing with the letter. Uh, it was postmarked, or it was dated on the 9th, but not postmarked until the 13th, and we just received it this morning. So it was kind of one of those, really? Just FYI. Uh, there's somewhere in the office it got lost or delayed or something. Um, to, to, uh, sorry to um, you know interrupt the the flow of the process here I, I understand the formality and everything get a little excited just want to make sure you have all the information um, along those lines though I'd like to request that whenever we're all done speaking that if you could include the four people that are most affected by whatever decision is made in your discussion I'll, feel free to ask them questions but allow them to also answer or interject just after we do it because you have all four homeowners here, 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 sitting in the crowd right now. And I know that this is a very key item to get done immediately. We've already delayed it a month because we had to come back a second time. And if we could get the answers resolved here, because like even one of the questions you had was, okay, when the accidents occurred, where were the paramedics there? What about the fire department? Dave and Cheryl were there. They could answer that, but you're looking at Mr. Mushiko. He didn't have the information on that, which is fair. So that's all I ask on that one. Um, also with Wildwood, um, we're going to step back on that whole aspect. We appreciate you uh, interjecting about taking into account the whole park, our natural setting. We love it. We're going about that in a different path. You will be seeing us in the future going forward with more issues about the traffic. But for right now, we need to focus on Dave and Cheryl and getting this resolved. That being said, I'm of the personal opinion that uh, option number two is best, also without the stop sign. 
If you have, I, I think it's best for one, you do have a break there. Guardrails around here is good. It's a good first step. Is there any way to put maybe concrete posts, you know, like what you see to entrance to malls or whatever, on the back side? So you, you're not going to, the front part's going to absorb the shock. The second, the back side might be where it actually made a, a second check and a little bit more stronger. That way you keep the post off the back here. Um, extending the island just, you know, where you have this angle here, that's a good idea. Well, that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, so that the people don't come and make a, try to make a U-turn up here. That'd be good. That's a good idea. Um, going through here, if you got this divider area here to slow down traffic to begin with, and the stop sign is the thing that's going to hold the whole process up because you've got to go to city council, it might be a good idea to do an iterative process where, okay, let's focus on getting this little divider in there to slow traffic down. Let's see how that works. That's a good first step. If it doesn't work and we need a stop sign, at least you got something in place already and we can go back to city council at that point. But for right now, for the first step, if we could leave the stop sign out, that'd be great. Um, and then traffic turning into here. Yeah, it'd be nice if there was a yield sign there maybe. I don't know. That's, I'm going to let you, you, know, you guys decide on that one. I'm going to let you figure out legally what's best. You guys have that. Um, the third option that you had, if you could bring that up. The concern I have on this one is, how, one, how far back does this even start? How far down the block? One minute. Uh, roughly, it's, it's going to be about uh, four to 500 feet or so from the intersection of uh, Big Sky because we need a, a sufficient distance to taper. Okay. And that, that there's a straight tangent section before you get to the stop sign. That uh, segment is at least 100 feet. Okay. So you're talking almost the length of the block then? Uh, no. not, not the entire almost. length. About two-thirds, though, half to two-thirds. Uh, roughly. Okay. Um, there's a road down in uh, Camarillo that I've encountered something like this and didn't even realize that that even existed, especially if the sun's in your eyes, that this is painted unless you got something raised to even give you notice. And I'm thinking if you have a drunk driver coming down, the last thing you really want to do is put a little bend in the road on top of. Uh, if it's going to come on through, I could see that. I, I actually see more issues with sober people and park people or, and just people around the neighborhood that have been there coming down this and just hitting into the island because they're not expecting it. They're not expecting this all of a sudden slight angle for a road that goes straight for two miles. Um, another question that I'd have on here is landscaping. What kind of landscaping are you going to put in? Because it can't be too tall for, or else you're going to affect all these people's views too. I think I did that. I, I think I finished this time, right? <laughs> um, do you have any questions? <coughs> Any questions from the commissioners? Next. Are you finished, Mark? Yeah, I just don't want to. Where do I put this? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh hold on. One question but from Commissioner Gregory. Um, what is your objection to the stop sign? Just convenience for where you live, or? I live actually more toward the opposite end of Bright Star. So about eight, nine houses away. Please hold the mic up. Oh. <laughs> um, it, it does work, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, I live about eight houses down. Um, with the stop sign, I'm actually relegating that to the preference of the neighbors who are actually affected by it and the noise, um, especially hearing about the history that I've heard it also from another neighbor that's been there the full time. There was a stop sign there. It didn't work. It was taken out. It was quieter. We do have some issues with people going around the corner too fast, but once again, in option two, if you put down that down the barrier there or that line to slow down traffic, once again, that might solve the problem. If worse came to worse, okay. then the stop sign. So it's really only noise? Pretty much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again. <laughs> Our next speaker is Mr. Tom Hare, to be followed by Robert Elias.
Hi. Please state your name and city of residence. Sure. My name's uh, Tom Hare. I live in Newberry Park, but I'm here tonight representing Canadian Rec and Park District. Uh, just want to say uh, we're more than happy to work with uh, the city uh, according to item 6A, like what we're focusing on, which is fantastic. Um, more than happy to work with the city and the neighbors on whatever kind of modifications maybe need needed to have in the parking lot, et cetera, et cetera. So more than willing to work with with you folks there. Um, and then the other issue, which I, which has been great that no one's been really talking about it, <laughs> the traffic. But so I just want to put out my little advertisement there, as as Cliff did earlier on today, um, that you know, we hey, we understand about uh, Wildwood. Uh, Wildwood is a regional park. And a regional park, by definition, is something that serves the region, which is outside our district boundary. So it's it's a very popular park and very understandable. Uh, it's a popular park, um, and you neighbors know that's why you probably live there because it's beautiful. I mean, it's great. It's a great place to hike. It's got some great amenities, whether it's the waterfalls or, or excuse me, the Paradise Falls or uh, the TPs or the easily accessible um, f um, from the from your neighborhood or from the 101 freeway uh, but we're more than happy to uh, work with you guys and be good neighbors uh, whatever whatever that means um, good neighbors and try to lessen the impact to your neighborhood because we know that is very important uh, to you and we'll work with the uh, the city uh, the police uh, Casca uh, and, and the neighbors to try to come up with a mutually beneficial uh, solution for all of us and as Mr. Cullen has said uh, before which is kind of interesting uh, something I was going to say, it's, it's always interesting that when we do come up with these uh, options and solutions, it's not everybody, you know, hey, hey, let's do this down here. But then that, the other guy says, well, I don't like that because it ruins my view. So we'll try to work out some, some, some sort of consensus and, and make everybody happy as best as we can. Uh, but re remember this is again this it's a it's a beautiful park we're trying to inspect uh, respect the integrity of the of the open space that's out there and also be good neighbors to you uh, so with that uh, I'll just let you know we will be sending out a mailer a little jab to say at least 10 days ahead of time <laughs> <laughs> no I love you guys I'm sure you guys did a great um, yeah sure yeah, it was probably uh, Kathy Lowry did it or something like that. Um, no, we'll send out a mailer ahead of time, but if um, uh, but we'll work between our 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 emails that we've already received and the city's emails. Uh, but we'll send out a mailer. But I also have my card here, so if anyone wants to get my get my card and email me your address or even pass it around to your neighbors, so make sure we hit everybody that's out there. Uh, we'll also post uh, signs at the park. Uh, because and remember, it's it's not only uh, the neighbors; it's also the stakeholders, which are people who use the park, who come from outside your neighborhood. So we'll try to put it out there. And as Cliff had said earlier on, we'll try to have a neighborhood meeting in the first couple of weeks of March. Uh, we're already tr are contacted Wildwood Elementary, so we can keep it local. So hopefully, we can have it down there in, in the multi uh, their multi-purpose room uh, down there. And let's see what else I have. Oh, and that's it. That's all I had. So if anyone f said feel free, I'll, I'll uh, well, actually, we'll just do this. Wait, why don't I just give it to you? And, and you want to take a card, take a card. And I'm available for questions for, for anybody at this point. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hare. And thanks for uh, addressing the residents in the room as well. Do the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Hare? There are no questions. Appreciate you coming down here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Our next speaker is Robert Elias. Thank you. Uh, Robert Elias, 914 Bright Star Street. And uh, I'm the third house uh, from the corner there. And um, I just wanted to, you know, there was one attachment that we haven't talked about that I, I, I actually saw in, I guess it was the email that was forwarded on. And it was a couple back before attachment number two or option number two. I don't know if we could scroll back to that. It's more of just a sketch. It's after the picture of the guardrail. <coughs> Hopefully it's in the pre... Might have been taken out of this. Maybe before this one? No? Okay, so this is a little different. There was an original sketch. I, I could just kind of hold it up over here uh, on my iPad. But that actually looked at kind of the concept in number two. It did not have the median. But it did have a no stop sign at the corner but it had a stop sign in terms of the left turn into the park. So 
it might be a happy medium. There it is. So you could still incorporate the median with the guardrail potentially in the middle there. You're eliminating the stop sign on the right-hand turn, but rather than having all these, because I think what people have a tendency to do is they make that, they come to the park, they don't know if they can make a left turn or a right turn, and they end up going right. They end up going all the way up the street and then turning around and, you know, that whole thing. So this would kind of corral people to make that left turn uh, into the park, and then there's a stop sign over there to prevent incoming traffic coming down Big Sky Drive. Um, potentially, you could even shave a little bit off the median there um, at the very end just to kind of make it, you know, if you needed a little bit of room to make that turn happen. But uh, just thought I'd throw that out there because it seems like it, it might address a couple of issues there. That's pretty much it. Anybody have any questions? Thoughts? Uh, Commissioner Simpson. Oh, I, I think that you raise a great point with the um, draft here. And I wondered if this is different or, or your thoughts on, okay, so let me rephrase that. Would this be a viable solution to blend with option two, the demarcations in that left turn lane? Um, if, if you could, we can address all of the speaker's comments. Um, let's, let's finish hearing the speakers. I don't, I don't want to get into a back and forth with the, with the speakers. Thank you. That's possible. Any other questions? No. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. That concludes our speakers for tonight. For the record, we have received two written emails regarding this matter. The emails were sent to staff. We have no statement cards that are in, that are in agreement with the engineer's recommendation, and we have one statement card that opposes the recommendation. Now it's time for staff to give us your input. Mr. Thank, Finley. Thank you, Chair Reader. We'll start with this one, this item right here. This was actually presented as a as a possibility at the at the January Traffic Commission meeting. The the problem here is uh, there there really isn't any with this configuration that the challenge is the the, the guardrail. Uh, where do you start it? Where do you stop it? Uh, this was actually just paint on the ground. Um, and I think we determined or the commission last time thought that this uh, you know obviously didn't have any sort of physical barrier you can make that a raised median um, but that's just a six inch curb with a few things in it there's there's no real way to put a guardrail in there that that doesn't have a head-on point as you can see um, that also eliminates the bike trail which I think there was or the bike path there was some discussion about that. Um, th those were just some of the issues that we discussed last time that I think we found not to be acceptable in, in last time. Um, but we can we can explore it further. We could, you know, we can we can revise the median. We can do all kinds of things out there with geometry. What we're trying to do is, at least what I'm trying to do is maybe try to align the car so that they don't run into 940 bright star that's that's really my goal a um, couple other items that were brought up um, if we can go to option two so um, the the challenge with this option uh, if you eliminate that stop sign in this option um, and you uh, so a car coming in to turn left at this location they can turn left, you can put a yield sign there. Well, as soon as two cars are turning left, you've now blocked that free right turn. Um, there's, it's gonna stack back into that, to that travel lane. Uh, what happens now is they cross over, you know, there is no, there's a bike lane there, but the bike lane, people cross into that bike lane and continue to go free right. You've now just eliminated that, that hatched area. Um, for trying to channelize cars over to that intersection. So by removing the stop sign, you've kind of created a little bit of chaos at that, at that intersection. Um, you've also got the median there. So suddenly you've got a lot going on there and it is, it is going to be a little confusing for drivers. The idea of putting the stop sign in is they stop, 
they assess the intersection. They decide if they're going right. They decide if they're going left. It's orderly. Um, it's right of way control, which is really what you're trying to do at that at, at that location. Um, extending the median up bright star without a guardrail, um, that's a possibility. Uh, you, you we could we could do that. We'd eliminate parking uh, on either side of bright star. Um, I I don't know necessarily that that's that would be a fine option. Um, if a, if a car deflects off those guardrails, they may or may not cross that median, but um, that that's okay. Uh, that would look fine. Uh, that median would that median and a median up bright star would be landscaped with drought tolerant plants. Uh, nothing tall, nothing big. Uh, there might be some small street trees added in there if they match the neighborhood, um, and and that applies to option three as well. That landscaping would be drought tolerant landscaping. Uh, the turf in the median is going to be replaced anyway with other other kinds of landscaping, a more drought tolerant plant palette. Um, so obviously we would we would plant that so that it doesn't block views. And and if if there were trees planted there, they'd probably be relatively small trees. Um, there was also the question brought up about uh, as you start to uh, taper the roadway. Um, how do you know that the roadway is suddenly changing direction? Uh, we, we, along with the paint, you put dots on that so that uh, just like any other median, they're raised dots so that if suddenly you, you travel off the, off the travel way, you suddenly start hitting dots, uh, which, would, which tells people, wow, I'm, something, something's happening. Also, at the end of that uh, median, you'd obviously would have uh, signs, you know, median, uh, uh, direction side, state, state to the left, those are typical at all medians. In other words, don't don't run into this median. Um, the idea of that median is um, anywhere from 100 to 200 feet long. If uh, somebody didn't taper and ran up into that median, that's several hundred feet of running or over stuff. It tends to slow vehicles down, and that's that's the kind of distance that we prefer to have cars slowing down in. So that's kind of the idea. That's just real estate there that uh, um, if a car didn't, didn't make that taper, didn't, didn't miss that taper, that they wouldn't, they'd, they'd just run into the median, essentially. Uh, we, we could add a guardrail that would deflect them back in the street along that median. That would be fine and could be added in as part of the landscaping and look relatively nice. Um, uh, it wouldn't look like a big bad guardrail. Um, it could it would look like the guardrails in Borchard, which are actually quite nice. So we could even do that on the on the lane side of that that guardrail. Um, also provides additional protection for bikes. At that intersection is very clean, very organized, very clear right of way. Um, you know, it yes, there is a stop sign which creates an inconvenience. As as many times uh, at intersections we. We have to measure convenience versus safety. There's always a compromise when we face issues like this. Uh, I don't know if I missed any options, Jim. Did I miss any questions? Well, I, I just want to add one more comment about this option number three in terms of a taper. Um, someone mentioned that the taper would be so sudden it would catch drivers off guard. Well, uh, whenever we do a road taper on the road, it's always based the taper distance is based on the speed limit. So based on the speed limit, it's, if it's uh, right now it's 45 miles an hour, there's a, a Caltrans requirement as to how long this taper distance would be. In this situation, uh, I believe I took a look at a, a, a sketch I had. Uh, the taper would begin eight houses back from um, the corner. So that's why this is a long taper. Uh, it wouldn't catch anyone off guard, and it would be according to the Caltrans standards. Is staff concluding? Oh, are you finished, Mr. Finley? Yeah, I, I may have missed. There was a lot of different things coming at us, but if there's anything I missed, please please uh, ask. Uh, we have a question from Commish Commissioner Gregory. Yeah, um, just uh, that uh, Paul Orcott uh, from that's right on the corner on uh, option two. Uh, he had made a comment on whether somebody could hit
hit the guardrail and bounce over to his property. What would be the likelihood of that? Um, I th I think it would be unlikely, um, but again, it's you know it's hard to know exactly where where the car would hit and where they would be when they hit. And I'm not very good at pool either. <laughs> <laughs> But the momentum is going straight, so <laughs> things tend to go straight. All right, thank you. Oh, and there was one other. Uh, uh, just extending the curve all the way up, did we cover that? Or were you, uh, uh, or was the guardrail what you suggested? Well, uh, uh, Mr. Dumay had, I believe, his example showed extending the guardrail up the median a ways. Um, we the problem with that is the end treatment of that that guardrail um another speaker uh just said we'll just extend the curb and we could extend that median up that landscape median up and do that um that would that would be fine uh that would provide at least a barrier in the street um that could be landscaped again as 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 one of the other speakers said that would anyone who did take that right would then have to do a u-turn in that intersection and come back down if they were trying to get to the park but um these these again are all compromises uh right. they all have impacts they just have different impacts so that something that down the road we could consider that isn't on our current option yes and and, and actually all of these options are going to require these are all preliminary designs so we could take direction from the commissioner commission um we can add to these we can take different ideas um, we will we will kind of throw the options out that we're not going to use focus on the other ones and work right. towards a more final design but we don't we don't have right. to decide all components tonight so the idea of putting concrete pillars or whatever on the back side of that what's the feasibility of that so so concrete pillars other than bridge uh, bridge columns are not in the Caltrans transportation manual um, you find those uh, in the um, federal defense manual they're for stopping people that are trying to enter buildings and blow them up or or whatnot um, they're not for the traveling public so we would not recommend putting concrete pillars again those are things that would likely um, kill somebody okay thank you thank you mr. Finley Commissioner Egler do you have any questions uh, mr. Finley I am um I'm, I'm leaning in the direction of, first of all, directing traffic away from, you know, to the south. And I know that um, I asked about this earlier. So I, that's a, where I'm starting is sh travel, travel um, direction, aiming someone away from where they are tr currently traveling. Is there a way of, core, of uh, including in option three some type of... Um, barrier that we see in option two uh, where it actually provides some some comfort and some directional divi you know dividing for that um, for the for the road at the curve but also some comfort for the uh, homeowner if that's a, a sticking point for um, for them so would you be looking at say option three but um making maybe making that landscape median uh, skinnier so that you had a free right turn lane over against the curb is that is that what you're thinking well you know i'm i'm really open uh i think well first of all the beauty of the right median is that it's to to um to actually get into the left turn you actually have to thread that needle right so you have to get through there if you've missed it that's a, a that's a great big median that blocks traffic that's not paying paying attention and they're driving um under the influence and they're 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 not making the ability to to travel i think that this choke is a this design is a good one um but i just wonder if there's something that provides more um is it enough? Are we shifting the traffic to the south enough, or, or, or is there anything that more we need to do that actually res restricts the traffic after they've stopped or haven't stopped? 
because if they're going and they're going too close to the uh, homeowner's property to their wall you know is there something else we can do um we we could add on uh, on either city property or or public prop or park property um you know an additional guardrail that kind of is parallel to mr dumas wall um Dumais wall um but if you look at this alignment uh it's and and again we need to do final design but it's it's definitely on a tangent that is is nowhere near um heading towards his wall at all um ad additionally the stop sign is no, the way this would be designed i mean um i i think it's safe to say and i'm pretty sure that none of the impaired drivers uh were from the neighborhood Nobody was trying to turn right because they thought the road was going straight. Um, so if they if they continue to think this road's going straight, there's going to be no no reason for them to be wanting to turn right at this location. And in fact, at the end of that, we would probably put the the red uh, red triangles to say this this road just ended right here across that, and those would all be on city property, um, not in front of Mr. Dumay's house. Um, they would they would be in directly in line with that stop sign. Those big red reflectors that say, "You're this is it. You're at the end." And uh, they'd have an entire you know an entire street width to to figure that out. And if they didn't figure it out, they'd go right through those signs and into open space or into whatever was was back there. Yes, uh, Commissioner Simpson. I was just gonna, for climate check, um, let the commission know that I'm definitely leaning towards option two. That we were here last month and our number one objective as a commission was to try to keep the cars in the street and not just deflected um, to open space. So I just wanted to let you all know that that's where I'm, I'm leaning right now. And, and the other thing to really consider about the stop sign is that it was there and was removed. And so I just see history repeating itself in future years to come where there might be a gap of, um, or new homeowners and complaints about the noise and traffic counts and not aligning with the metrics that would require a stop sign. So I think in my mind, the perfect design would would eliminate that that tra uh, stop sign for people that are going on to Bright Star and would include a stop sign for the folks that are turning into Wildwood Park, just to give you guys a, my perceptions right now. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gregory. Um, well, I have some feedback on three, and the first thing that kills that one for me is it's gonna take a year. And I don't think you guys want to wait a year. I don't particularly like the design. Uh, some of the feedback was that people, after they blew straight through, were still able to go right. So I still have a serious uh, issue with that. We're trying to engineer something that, you know, uh, is still trying to save the life of, of somebody and slow them down if they didn't stop. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, a stop sign it's pretty hard to blow through even if you're inebriated it's at least going to slow you down and then you know if you did hit a barrier that's designed to slow you farther uh it should protect everybody uh, by taking that stop sign out i i i think that just promotes a lot of confusion and staff's recommendation when they said that uh you know uh safety has to take precedence sometimes you know the whole point is uh uh you know, we're putting the stop sign in so that hopefully not one person ever blows through here, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that the stop sign by itself does. Uh, but we're not taking the chance that only a stop sign is, is you know, the safety precaution that we're looking for here. So that's, uh, that's why I'm leaning towards the supporting uh, option two. Thank you, Commissioner. My turn now. <laughs> We're having a general conversation, including staff. Is that correct? Because originally it was for questions for staff, but it's kind of morphed into a, a, a discussion among ourselves. Oh. Okay. Um, 
we can't forget that our main purpose of being here tonight is to protect uh, Mr. DeBay and his property. Um, in light of that, I agree with uh, Commissioner Simpson's idea that perhaps a full stop at this intersection is, is not required. My, com my uh, question with staff, if we installed this without uh, stop signs and we had many collisions or a few collisions that resulted from a confusion, whatnot, uh, I see a stop sign could then be added once it was determined that it was actually necessary. Would staff be agreeable with that approach? Yeah, there's no stop sign there now. No, and no accidents either. <laughs> well, we just got these couple well, these the, collisions that are going straight through, which well, is those what are, we're those, to that's a different on. story. That we're, we're talking about normal drivers. So. Um, I'd like to uh, express to my fellow commissioners that I did visit this area on the weekend, and I saw pedestrians, cars stopping in the roadway to parallel park, car doors opening into the roadway while people unloaded their cars, parents with children, and many dog lovers walking their pets. There was a lot of activity going on there on the weekends. <laughs> now my observation was that not a single car traveled through the area at, a, at the speed limit of 25 miles an hour. I estimated that the cars proceeded along the road at about 10 to 15 miles an hour at the most, probably uh, due to the uh, activity in the street. It was, it's a confusing situation. No one was driving fast. This low speed then may account for the lack of accidents due to conflicts in who has the right of way. Concerning the in install of a stop sign for westbound Avenida de los Obelis motorists, the stop sign requires that a motorist looks to the left and to the right before proceeding through an intersection. A motorist that is required to stop at Big Sky looks to the left, where only on rare occasion perhaps a driver is exiting the Wildwood driveway and proceeds to travel north on Big Sky. Next, our motorist looks to the right, where there is never a conflict of right of way. In my opinion, stopping all westbound Avenida de los Arboles traffic 24-7 for a right-of-way determination by a driver needs to be looked at with a, a very critical eye. For residents, as they have spoken here tonight, there will be more noise and, what wasn't mentioned, air pollution. Now, my fellow commissioners, we've looked at uh, some traffic control devices that Mr. Moderman created in Holland, and he eliminated all traffic control devices to create a, sa a safe, efficient intersection for pedestrians, bicycles, and automobiles. And to summarize this, perhaps more is less is more sometimes. So that is my opinion on the uh, the stop sign. I'm obviously not in favor of it at this time. Regarding the barriers. I believe that we should explore a barrier design that would deflect or divert a vehicle away from Mr. Dubai's property, rather, to, rather to, to construct a crash barrier at the end of Avenida de los Arboles that almost ensures occupants of a vehicle striking the barrier at 45 miles an hour would be subjected to major injuries or be killed. I would suggest to my fellow commissioners that we ask staff to present this commission with additional options to solve Mr. Dubai's dilemma. Um, regarding the, the dots as traffic is diverted, are those similar to the dots that cause, that <coughs> cause rumble? In other words, would, would this affect the noise of the residents adjacent to these dots? The, the dots would actually, um, in option two, there, there aren't any dots, actually. Option three. Option three, uh, they're the reflectors or that they're on the side of, the, of a lane line, you know, when you're out. Mm -hmm. uh, they, so the, 
Yeah, you would, if you so run on would, them, you would, would hit them, noise. but they don't cross the roadway. So they only would, it's only if you are leaving the roadway that you would experience the dot noise. Yeah, so we would expect that to happen occasionally. Occasionally. Um, again, with my fellow commissioners, would it be something to consider tonight to not vote on this as an action item? Especially since there were mailings that were sent out late and we have yet to receive a report from staff regarding the observations on the weekends that uh, your observers have recorded. Yes, Commissioner. Well, I have a question, and that is uh, if staff thinks they can re-engineer uh, option number two any better than it is now, knowing full well it's not fully engineered, they have listened to what you've said, but um, you know, there are only so many tools. There's only so many ways that are acceptable designs. You can under-design it, you can over-design it. Both of those won't accomplish something. So you have to try the best design and see how it works. Uh, but you can go back and design and design and design and never get to your end point. And since something needs to be put in here for safety reason within a certain time frame, this is shoving that down the, the road quite a bit. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, I was hoping we could come to a conclusion today. I'm not a fan of taking that stop sign out. I see it causing problems. But if if that's what it took to move this forward, you know, I would relent on that one point, knowing full well that we could put it back in. I don't see where staff's going to come back and design a better, you know, barrier here. <laughs> that's all there is to it we can't put a wall that just stops anything from hitting it you know we don't want to kill somebody and we can only slow them down as best we can with the tools that we have and I think that's what we're trying to do so that's kind of where I stand we're either going to kick this way down the road or we're going to make a decision tonight Commissioner Engler thank you so <clears throat> I am um, I, I agree with Commissioner Gregory's just uh, re most recent statements. I, <coughs> excuse me, I do believe that our park enjoys record numbers because it has um, been promoted through a tool we never envisioned when this park was built. Um, and our regional park wasn't designed with this type of traffic and our traffic plans there were not designed uh, or, or what, what exists weren't designed with this type of grown up um, traffic that we receive now in, in terms of visiting the park and using this area. I do believe that we have to look at the most adult approach to the entire area and it should be something to consider. Um, I believe if we do something, I, I won't, I would not support putting this off because I do believe we have to make a decision to take action tonight, but I am willing to work with a phased in approach, but I still believe that directing traffic in a different direction, such as an option three, is something we may have to consider if we're, what we adopt tonight doesn't work, if it, we work with a uh, set, uh, option two um, and it, it's not quite working we still may have to go back to the do uh, drawing board and really do a more complete study of how we're going to manage that because um, I want to assure that we're getting it right um, I believe that the um, the stop sign is a very important part of option two or and option three <coughs> I believe that we can put it off and see how it works. However, I think that the existence of the stop sign will help stop a lot of the people who are there and, and protect right away issues from cropping up. So my preference is to start with an option two um, tonight to have a vote on it and go forward so that we're taking steps and moving forward. But also, we may have to go back to look at this more seriously if it's not working. Thank you, Commissioner. Well said. I have a question of staff. One, after listening to the comments, especially from the residents, 
and you look at your three options that you're presenting tonight, do you feel that this, these options are the best you can do? Or would you like to be able to tweak them a little bit? We, uh, we, I guess one, one point of clarification that I would have on option two is whether you want us to consider extending that median up uh, Bright Star some distance. Um, uh, in doing that, we would uh, need to eliminate the parking on each side of Bright Star, which would require us uh, to notify the neighborhood of that because that does have impacts. Um, we could start proceeding with direction tonight. We can start proceeding on any of these things, start finalizing the design, and come back to the commission with hopefully a final design, um, which if we, if we find any fatal flaws, we can bring those to you. Um, I think we can move forward. These are concepts. These are, if you, if you like option two, we will push option two out and give you the best uh, design we can. And we will need to, we can get started. We will need to bring it back. We're not going to, we're not going to build anything by next traffic commission meeting. So we can, we can bring it back to you um, and tell you what we're thinking looks like a little more final design. Um, I could tell you, just talking to Jim, um, what what we would do here if we eliminated that stop sign, uh, we would probably back to maybe the second house or maybe the third house. We'd eliminate that hashed hash striping, and you would end the bike trail because what you'd have is this car started to stack in that lane. They would the ones making the free right would have a tendency to go over and just make that right turn. So they're going to take up that space there's about 11 feet there so there's enough room you know as cars were to back out uh, or st or stack in that location uh, similar to what happens today i believe um so anyway i think we can move forward with option two without with or without the stop sign we can see what it looks like and uh, bring it back to commission next meeting we'll, we'll move forward and final design or try to get that done um so that as soon as that next meeting goes we can you know proceed with construction drawings Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Finley. Um, it seems that some of my fellow commissioners see a sense of urgency here at the expense of perhaps uh, <coughs> creating the very best design that we possibly could. Um, I'm looking at the frequency of uh, the DUIs coming into this in, uh, intersection. It's been very frequent in the last few months. But prior to that, years went by with nothing. So. I almost feel like uh, we could take a chance that uh, the odds are, not, are, are on our side again that uh, we will not have another DUI collision there for another 30 days in order then for us to have you come back to the table with, with the perfect plan. I, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm not sure what perfect looks like well, either beyond these, <laughs> these three. Um, so I... I think I think we're you know it's an iter this is what we call an iterative process and at some point in time it's yeah. good enough and you go well, ahead and the question design is, it. is is there urgency here to do this or not no one knows so with um, oh, Commissioner oh, Simpson. um so to move this forward would you is the process now for one of us to put a motion on the floor to accept option two minus the stop sign, um, adding more distance to the median, a big sky with the um, notice going out to residents that potentially we would be removing parking to be more aligned with Mr. Uh, Dumai's original plan. Um, is that what we, the action we need to take now to move forward with option two as a concept and then it will continue to evolve? Yeah, what we need is just a direction from the commission on what you like, what you don't like, and we'll we'll chase that back and uh, and and bring back a design that's that's has what you like and what you don't like. Thank you. Would my fellow commissioners agree with uh, Commissioner Simpson's suggestion that she make a motion to the effect of what she described? Um, I just have a comment to make, and that is. Uh, I'm not rushing this design. Uh, as staff had originally said, this is a draft. I trust them. They know how to engineer things. They will take everything that was said 
and they will come up with the best design possible. All right. Um, I'm just being sensitive that something's better than nothing, and sometimes analysis, you know, paralysis by analysis. So I just want you all to know every time we don't make, you know, a definitive decision to move forward, if you recall, it's four to six months. It's not a month from now. That's tacked on to the four to six months, okay? So I don't mind waiting a month. I'll support uh, uh, Vice Chair uh, Simpson's recommendation that they come back, and you can see what a little closer to a final design would be. I don't have that problem, but that burden's on you, <laughs> okay? I mean, I can't shorten that time frame up. We're, we're, we're expediting this as best we can, and believe me, it's moving faster than most things do, <laughs> okay? Did you have a comment, <laughs> Mr. Finley? Procedurally, um, I believe Mr. Dumay has an opportunity to come back and at kind of the end of this discussion. And yes, he does. Say a few words. Thank you. Mr. Dumay, approach the podium and... and uh, Mr. DeMay, you'll be at the podium. You've already told us your city of residence, so yes. we're good there. Same city, and I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not, and I'm not moving. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody for your for your words and support. I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the work that that, that you've done. We've had a good conversation, mic? Cliff and I. Myself. Could you hold the mic a little closer? Sorry, to your sorry. I'm not a performer. Um, I just want to address Mr. Elias, and this is for uh, Ms. Engler uh, as well. I got my idea out of this. Okay, I, I, the, and I hope that staff can get that information back to the commissioners because this is where, you know, I should say I got my idea. No stop sign, controlled turn with some, and I, I think I, I don't know if I used guardrail, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I, I'm talking about traffic control measures because I'm not an engineer. That's their job. Their job is to engineer this. Carries around the corner, stops coming into the park, this makes with the infrastructure in the in the median that's what makes this safe because you carry it around the corner you don't have somebody going off into the and we're talking about errant drivers we're not talking about everyday drivers that go off into the property here they capture themselves up in this intersection they don't go off property this is controlled because it needs to be controlled because there's no control coming southbound so it's it's the, the reason why I kind of worked with some folks to get this design was to control and be safe in the intersection. Um, real quick, I only have five minutes. Um, the abutment that was def that was um, in my design, uh, I put an abutment out here toward um, uh, Bright Star, and not sand barrels. But if you go down the freeway, you'll see guardrails or traffic control measures that have abutments that that if cars would hit them, they would collapse. Sand barrels, and again, I drive 120 miles a day. Seems like they're in the gore point when you get off. That's why I think I've seen most sand barrels. But then again, I'm not an engineer, but I, that's my two cents. Um, that's what I'd be, uh, I, would, I would go look for an, uh, an abutment versus a sand barrel. Um, bollards, I, I understand that they're not uh, traffic control measures, they're more of security measures, you know, on, you know, Target and Nordstrom's and those deals. I, I get that, I understand. You know, um, we don't want to have a situation like uh, out by herbs where somebody goes through, you know, uh, off road and they end up going through uh, the median because we've seen that happen and that was a, that was a, uh, a terrible consequence there. Um, and, and these are drunk drivers. They don't care about stop signs. They don't stop. They can't even see a wall. They didn't even see a house. And that's verbatim from the woman I pulled out of the car. What wall? What pool? I'm in Reseda. <laughs> <laughs> so breaking the vault, wall versus safety, I'm going for safety. I hope that staff gives you, ma'am, the, the proposal. You'll see that it's pretty much like this. Uh, carries traffic around, and whether it's guardrail, whether it's cable rail, or something that might look nicer, I, I don't know, but we need to keep them in the street. That's my motto from day one. Ms. Simpson echoed it. Thank you very much. Uh, keep vehicles in the street and off anybody's property. And with that, I thank you all for the opportunity to speak twice. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
Ms. Simpson, would you like to make a motion? Sure, thank you. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that staff move forward with further developing option two's concept with um, without the stop sign being included, uh, adding more distance to the median up Big Sky and uh, aligning the effort to remove parking um, per the original drawing that we'd seen from the resident of 940 Bright Star. Right. Yeah, so specifically no parking on Big Sky. So, okay. oh, I'm sorry, just a point of clarification on the motion. Um, so the the option that uh, so do you want us to extend guardrail up that median as well or just extend the median i think the way that you had it um you'd pose the question about if we extend the median there could be safety issues for the cars coming down bright star then so i think that's where we would just have to lean on your expertise to create the safest um Okay. Solution there. Um, yeah, the the the, the guardrail that um, Mr. Dumay had had he'd actually we we've exchanged some pictures that he showed me is is um, the metal guardrail on the freeway where they overlap each other. So the idea is is you hit it, it collapses. Um, but it's it's a metal it's a metal guardrail system. It's a Caltrans system. Um, that they they put some time in front of bridge abutments where they don't have a lot of they don't have enough room for the barrels um it's fairly unsightly i i would think i mean i wouldn't want it in my neighborhood um but we will try to figure out what we can do to make that extend that guardrail as far as we can again we're we're trying to use the wood guardrail design because it looks a lot more attractive than the metal guardrail design so we'll see what we can do and and like we just called out the, there could be potentially three guardrail barrier between a potential inebriated driver and the resident's home and their wall so that would be potentially four different barriers yeah we'll we'll, we'll do the best we can okay thanks Thank you. Do we have a second from Mrs. Simpson's motion? Second. Thank you, Ms. Engler. Ms. Zambarno, let's take a vote. When your name is called, please say yes or no. Commissioner Engler? Yes. Commissioner Gregory? Yes. Vice Chair Simpson? Yes. Chair Reeder? Yes. Motion carries four to zero. Ms. Zambrano? The Traffic Commission makes recommendations to the City Council and interested parties may attend a Council meeting and speak either for or against the recommendation of the Traffic Commission. Any person wishing to appeal a decision of the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission shall follow a written appeal and pay an appeal fee with the City Clerk's Office within 14 calendar days of this decision. The matter will be referred to the City Council at the earliest reasonable and available date. The appeal fee will be refunded only if the City Council overturns the Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission's decision. An appeal form is available from the recording secretary. Thank you, Ms. Sombrano. We'll continue with engineer's report. The next item is item 6B, the bicycle advisory team recommendations. This is a inf <laughs> Where are you? Where's everyone going? <laughs> We're not done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming. Uh, this is an information item. And uh, Mr. Mashiko, is that you? Will uh, you be giving the report? Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Chair Reader. There's uh, not a, uh, s a significant report on this, just again, as you mentioned, information. Uh, you'll see in this packet a copy of the uh, meetings from our last bicycle advisory team meeting that took place in uh, January 25th. Um, so, if, uh, you know, you could read through it, see what they uh, discussed, a number of different issues, and upcoming projects in the city. And secondly, we were um, notified of a uh, grant, a successful grant uh, application that we'd submitted uh, for uh, about $100,000. Oh. That concludes? That concludes the uh, 
comments. Thank you. Well, that's wonderful news. I think I can speak uh, on behalf of the, my fellow commissioners. Uh, could staff please relay our congratulations to Kathy Lowry for being appointed to the California Bicycle Advisory Committee, a, a very important position, I'm sure. And uh, one, uh, one question that perhaps the uh, bicycle advisory team can answer and that is uh, apparently the bicycles are mainly road bicycles that we're addressing and under the um, bicycle tourism section I was wondering if any attempt is made to uh, include uh, bicyclists that like to ride on the trails and uh, often called uh, dirt biking so if you could relay that question to her uh, I would appreciate it Good. Any other comments from staff? Okay. Uh, next item is a status report of prior traffic commission recommendations. Uh, tonight regards the flashing yellow arrows. Um, yes, uh, last month, as you recall, we uh, had a report on the flashing yellow arrows, the status of the initial uh, five installations. And um, uh, what we're going to do is take that, we've scheduled that item for our March 28th City Council meeting. So the council will have the that information that, that you heard, and um, they can go ahead and uh, approve the motion that was made at the last meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mashiko. Next item is commission referrals from January 18th, 2017. Okay, yes, that this item uh, is related to the... Uh, uh, information item we had in the last packet regarding uh, a meeting that took place in December with the Waverly Heights uh, residents um, on December 5th and um, I guess the question became or was centered around whether or not uh, this there was any uh, um, exploration of a uh, new access into the school from Flores um, basically what, what's happening is that we're in the process of meeting with those residents again that we met with in December uh, we're probably going to be um, uh, imagine in the next 30 days or so and we'll you know give you information uh, as to the outcome of that meeting but um, at that meeting what we're expected to have uh, city staff as well as uh, uh, the uh, school school district as well as the park district uh, at that meeting and we imagine uh, the park district um, can talk about that issue about that access road because it does go through their property and they'll um, let the residents know what the process is for them to open up their master plan and see whether or not that's a, a viable option um, but uh, we do want to make it known that um, the that's sort of a secondary issue the main issue that the residents were concerned with was the excessive volume cutting through the neighborhood and the only really you know feasible way to uh, cut that down would be to close some of the neighborhood streets and uh, so th that would have to be addressed first and then maybe the secondary road but uh, for the residents to close the street they would have to circulate a petition within the neighborhood and have at least 60 percent of the residents agree that that that's a good idea and then the city will uh, take a look at that Thank you, Mashiko. Commissioner Gregory has the, a question. The street that you're talking about, is that Old Farm Road that feeds into the school, closing that? I, I think mean, uh, yeah. it would be a combination of uh, two streets to cut off the north-south circulation through the neighborhood, and that would be Montgomery Road and um, Brush Hill Road. Those are the two streets that can get you from Jans up to Flores. Okay. Good luck with all that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Angler, did you have a... You're fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mashiko. Next item is commission referrals. Well, excuse me, I just did that. Next item is work program and commission schedule. Commissioners, any comments? None? I have one, and I'd like to ask my fellow commissioners if... Uh, this is of, is of an any importance to us. Um, we have a left turn arrow scheduled to be installed at Village Glen in Agura Road. That is coming up before council on, I believe, March 28th. 
Uh, no, that item uh, came for the traffic commission. I want to say uh, last year, um, and actually, the commission directed staff or agreed with staff to go ahead and in install a protected left turn at that location based on some accident history. Um, that was before we were installing the the yellow uh, protection arrows, uh, the yellow the yellow flashing. So if if the commission wants to, we can have a discussion of whether or not that location might be better served with a flashing yellow arrow instead of a protected uh, left turn. Um, if we do that, we would need to agendize that at this meeting because that that was installed at the request of uh, some residents, and we would want to make sure that they knew we were we were contemplating a change if if the commissioner wanted to do that. Is that intersection suitable for the FYIs, FYAs? So as Robert reported last time, he was doing some additional evaluation on that intersection. Um, so he wasn't prepared to say yes or no at this point in time. It was it, it, that intersection is on his list of uh, future possibilities. Um, so if we did agendize that, he could bring it back and provide a, a report if that was uh, well, the desires of the commission. If it's decided to be done, it would certainly save the city money to have it done now rather than down the road after the left turn arrow is installed. That's correct. Good. So I asked my fellow commissioners, should we put this item on a future agenda as to how to uh, recommend this to the city council? All right. Thank you. Item 10 is traffic commission comments and discussions. I, anybody have, yes. Well, I, I wanted to say I really appreciated the communication that was sent out from Dominga, um, from chair reader. And I really liked the theme of starting a conversation. And so um, on the heels of moving that theme forward, I was at the lakes and noticed this great advocacy billboard that made, um, brought texting and driving to the forefront. And it had a really catchy phrase about texting and driving makes good people look bad. And that made me say that is so true. And, um, you know, I took a picture of that sign and then investigated a little bit more to check out the website. And it took me to, um, a great scholarship opportunity for our local students here or any college students as well to develop their own texting and driving awareness video uh, radio ad or graphic that could be um, nationally promoted and the scholarship amount is up to five thousand dollars so with the timing you know for Scott for uh, the folks that are for planning for college and how wonderful our CVUSD programs are, um, I just thought I would like to communicate that there is a great scholarship and, and figure out how we could potentially co-promote and get this conversation started with our younger drivers to help develop a great advocacy campaign for our city. Well, thank you, Commissioner Simpson. I'm thrilled to hear what you just said because uh, so many times we sit here trying to solve problems, and uh, I think we also need to have our commission be looking forward uh, to other things that can make our city even greater than it already is. Um, in light of the time we spent now discussing uh, other important matters, um, I'm not going to encourage us to um, speak much more uh, about new ideas or such, but uh, I would suggest that uh, one topic of conversation in the future is to discuss how we can align ourselves better with the Planning Commission. Um, I don't know uh, how much the Planning Commission uh, pays attention to uh, traffic management when they're planning out cities, but this uh, one um, video that uh, was sent out to us uh, describing how uh, Ian Lockwood in West Palm Beach, Florida, uh, came about designing uh, his uh, traffic management where he got away from modernistic tra traffic management to more traditionalistic traffic management. And uh, especially, uh, this might be important because the city council hired um, some individuals to study how this transformation of our downtown area should be. 
and it came back that we should try to create a village. And uh, I think this commission could be very instrumental in creating a village atmosphere um, as we manage traffic through the area. So that's, my, that's all right with my fellow commissioners, and I keep that as a future topic, maybe toy around, maybe come up with some new ideas. That, uh, and then also uh, the importance of us uh, being associated more closely with um, the Planning Commission. We, we not, not too often do we hear what com Planning Commission is up to, and sometimes we are years down the road, we have to deal with what was done. So a suggestion anyway. Commissioner uh, Gregory. Yeah, just as an input for that, and I noticed that the Planning Commission just uh, approved the mixed use for Lupe's restaurant. Now, I wasn't privy to that, but did they address traffic issues? Because that that little area is, with just the way it is right now, is a little on the confusing side. So was was that part of their decision to approve that? Uh, yes, they're actually uh, the plans show the elimination of at least one curb cut uh, in front of Lupe's. So there will now only be the access off Tio Boulevard uh, by Leslie's Pool. So at least they're making that a little less confusing. Additionally, uh, which we have not brought to the commission, there's some um, some plans for the boulevard that include. Uh, um, actually putting in a, the the specific plan calls for a median uh, through that entire length of uh, Thousand Oaks Boulevard from Herbs up to um, Canal School Road. It's it's already up to Dallas, so it's really from Dallas back to Herbs would be the extension of that. That that's all within the the um, the plan at this point in time, the specific plan, um, and it's kind of all part of that big picture planning stuff. We there's really no not a project uh, the the there's a there's a draft out there that talks about an implementation of a phase of that but it hasn't really been developed and yes traffic was was an issue um, again you already have a use at that location so I believe the additional trips that uh, were were there were under 200 I want to say it was 190 because you already have a lot of trips already it at that location so it's it's not significant Right, uh, a meridian uh, down TO would take out that the safe lane, right? The mixed use. Uh, a median? Yeah. Yeah, would do. I'm sorry, would do what? Well, I mean, isn't there a a, a mixed use lane right in the middle there for people I, to try to get across the street and all that? There is. There's a there's a two way. Yeah, oh. a median lane. So that would eliminate that, right? Which would yeah. <laughs> change. Um, if you if you'd like us to bring that forward to the commission at some point in time, just to kind of an information item, we'd be happy to do that. Yeah, I'd be just, interested. Just in what's that. going on with yeah. the discussions? I think that would be a, a very valuable thing. Thank you, Mr. Finn. Thank you. All right, time for adjournment. <laughs> The Traffic and Transportation Advisory, oh, yeah, where is our next meeting? I don't have it on my system. Our next, oh, that's coming up. The Traffic and Transportation Advisory Commission is now adjourned until 6 p.m. on March 15th, 2017, in the boardroom of the Civic Arts Plaza on the third floor. Thank everyone for attending, and good night. <laughs>